All right, big day today. Tesla just announced their new Model 3 update, which has way more changes than you would expect. It's using 50% new parts. So that means it's not just a facelift. They're actually making some significant changes under the hood. And I went out and scoured the internet for everything that I could find, every single change that was made from the old Model 3 to the new Model 3. And I've compiled them here in a list. And we're gonna start with the exterior, then we're going to move more towards the performance and the drag coefficient. And then last, we're going to cover the interior. And there are actually significant changes made to all three of those categories. So this is actually really exciting and I'm pumped to talk about it. So let's get into it. Let's look at the visual differences between the old Model 3 and the new Model 3. If we go in here and uh, if we're looking, we can see the old one had these big, People call them frog eyes. I kind of did think they looked like a frog or a fish, um, but those are gone in favor of a much slimmer, sleeker, more minimal looking headlight. Personally, I'm not as big of a fan of this. I think it does look more aggressive, but it kind of loses some of the playful side that it used to have, but whatever, this is my personal opinion. Then we also used to have these big fog lights on the bottom with some vents to scoop air towards the around the front wheels. And as you can see, those are totally gone too. So that's a bit of a bummer for me. But other than that, we can see that the front end is much slimmer, much sleeker, and looks just more simple and minimal. Whereas the old one kind of had this curve going on here and kind of had made those frog lips or the fish lips. Style is subjective, so I'm going to leave that up to you. For me personally, I think it looks more aggressive and more minimal, but I think it kind of loses some of its character that it used to have. Uh, as far as the rear view, this is the top one, this is the old, and this is the new. And as you can see, the old one has the tail lights just like you'd expect, and the new one, they split out. And what's important about this, if you go watch, CarWow got an early exclusive access with the new Model 3, and if you watch theirs, you can see that these are, these tail lights are actually on the trunk itself. So when the trunk lifts up, those tail lights are gonna lift up, so it's not split anymore. And you can, if we zoom in, you can see the trunk doesn't split like this, whereas on the old model, you can see that the trunk runs straight through, so they're not split anymore. So that's one change. Um, as far as the back, you can see there's kind of this like, almost a diffuser. I'm not exactly sure what you call that, but it kind of looks like a diffuser to me back here, whereas the old one didn't have that. And then the old one had some little reflectors or lights and this one doesn't. It also comes with new wheels, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Now, as far as the side profile, to my eye, I can tell almost no differences. You've got obviously the front, which looks different and the rear, which looks different. Okay, fantastic. But the side, it, might, it has a slightly more pronounced uh, accent here, at least to me, and then Maybe the windows got a tiny bit bigger in the back. I'm not exactly sure, but I would say as far as the side goes, it is a very, very similar car. And for the hubcaps, you used to have this five prong approach and now they've got a seven prong uh, wheel here. Whichever one you like, I think they're pretty similar. It doesn't really make a difference to me. And the last thing as far as the exterior is now we have two new colors. One of them is called Ultra Red and the other one is called Stealth Gray. But I am happy to say that these changes, these visual changes on the exterior aren't just to make it look better, but it's also to improve the aerodynamic efficiency. So the drag coefficient went from a 0.225, which is the old one, to a 0.219. Now, that along with other changes, which we'll get into, improved the range with the exact same battery technology by 12%. That is really significant. And the drag coefficient makes this new Tesla Model 3 the most aerodynamic Tesla ever, which is just kind of cool. So given that we have an increased range, the rear wheel drive version is now starting at 346 miles and the long range version is now starting at 423 miles. Okay, now let's get into the interior because this is where the majority of the changes were made. And this is where I think you're going to have a lot of small improvements, but they actually add up to a significantly better car. The first thing, if you were going to step in the car, the first thing you're going to notice is that they added ambient lighting in the interior, which we don't have great pictures on but it kind of just looks like an led strip a nice led strip but one that just kind of runs around the car itself adds a little bit of ambiance to the interior then tesla said that they upgraded the materials that are being used in the interior especially the ones that are going to be interacted with by the driver so now you have metal bits where they used to be plastic 
And the other thing is all the cloth and fabric and different things that are used around the cabin are now upgraded so that they'll have better sound dampening properties to make it quieter on the road. And they clearly had a goal of making it a lot quieter because they didn't stop the improvements there. They also decreased the wind and ambient noise by 30%. They improved the road impact noise by 25% and they improved the road noise by 20%. They did this by, like I said, adding those new materials to the interior, but they also added acoustic glass to the rear windows and rear windshield. They added more sound insulation and they changed the shape of the hood and aerodynamics so that less air would be buffeting the front windshield that would make less noise. And if we look at the steering wheel, we can see that now it much more closely resembles the Tesla Model S or X, although luckily it's still round. I think a lot of people are gonna be happy about that. But that means your blinkers are now little thumb buttons, capacitive buttons on the steering wheel. But luckily your horn is still dead center so that muscle memory doesn't have to be relearned and that's actually a good thing because I think having the horn on a button is ridiculous. They also upgraded the suspension with new springs and dampers. They changed the geometry of the front suspension to hopefully give better ride quality. And they added new tires, which are supposed to also allow for a smoother ride. As far as the big ol' iPad slapped in the middle, that also got an improvement, which is huge. It's the same size, but it's now brighter and more responsive. And I think those are things that are going to make a really big difference as far as their day-to-day -day interaction with the car, because as far as the Tesla Model 3 goes, you pretty much only interact with the car via that touchscreen. They also added their new ventilation system 2.0, which allows you to do things like turn off the passenger's air if they don't want air. But they also added, and this is big, this is something I've wanted for a while, they added heated and cooled seats for the driver and the passenger. So that's going to be really nice in the cold winter and the hot summer. They also improved the Bluetooth connectivity, improved the Wi-Fi range and signal strength. They added a new stereo, which went from 14 speakers in the old one to 17 speakers in the new one. And for for rear passengers, they added a touchscreen in the back, just like what's in the Model S. And so with that, they can do climate control, they can do stereo control, and they can even watch movies and play games and all that sort of thing. And I'm sure there are going to be dramatically more changes that we find out over time. We just don't have great information yet. But if they're saying they changed 50% of the parts, then there is going to be a lot more that we're going to discover. So when is this going to be available? Well, it's delivering to Europe and the Middle East starting as early as October, but in the US, we're not exactly sure when we're gonna get the release. It looks like probably end of 2023 or early 2024. And as far as pricing, while it's not released in the US, so we don't have an American dollars, uh, I went to the Netherlands site or the Tesla Netherlands site and that is starting at 43,000 euros. So yeah, that's the newly announced Tesla Model 3. As far as I'm concerned, this is a lot of little changes that hopefully will add up to make a big difference. I'm not entirely sure how big of a difference is going to make, but any improvement is good improvement, especially if it doesn't come at a price increase, then of course we're gonna take it. As far as the styling, I'm not a huge fan of the styling. I actually think I liked the old, more playful styling a little bit more than the new, more aggressive stuff, but that's totally up to you, so. But one thing is for certain, the Tesla Model 3 has been one of the most popular EVs in the world for the last six years that it's been around. So having an update like this is going to dramatically improve their sales almost without a doubt. And the thing that I wanna speculate on that we don't know, but the Model 3 and the Model Y are based on each other, or really the, the Model Y is based on the Model 3. So this makes me curious if Tesla is also going to announce an, an updated Model Y in the coming future. I, don't, I haven't found any solid concrete information on that, but I would be hopeful that that means there's also a Model Y refresh to the same styling and the same improvements, but we'll have to wait and find out. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.